السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستغفره ونستعينه ونشكره ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن نبينا وحبيبنا وعظيمنا وقائدنا وقرة أعيننا سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أجمعين All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise Him We seek aid and His forgiveness We seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala From all the evils of our souls And the evils of our actions Whomsoever Allah guides There is none to, mis to misguide And whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Misguides there is none to guide I bear witness that there is None worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone without any partners and I bear witness that Sayyidina wa Habibina Muhammadan sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and messenger. My brothers and sisters, I advise first and first foremost myself, then you, to be God conscious. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Holy Quran in Surah Al-Munafiqun بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأنفقوا مما رزقناكم من قبل أن يأتي أحدكم الموت فيقول ربي لولا أخرتني إلى أجل قريب فأصدق وأكن من الصالحين This is in Surah Al-Munafiqun chapter 63 verse 10 And spend from what we in reference to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have provided you before that comes to one of you the death and that person would say oh my lord why not you delay me for a term near so I would give charity and be among the righteous Al Imam Ibn Al Qayyim rahimahullah may Allah have mercy on his soul stated in one of his books Zayd Al Ma'ad regarding our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he was the most generous of people in giving charity and that he did not think anything too valuable or too any or, or anything too insignificant to give in charity rather if anyone was to ask for something then he sallallahu alayhi wasallam would give it to them whether it was a little or whether it was great his happiness and his joy who was receiving that charity from him that's how Habibi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was. This, my brothers and sisters, show the tremendous iman or faith that Allah subhanahu wa Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had. This is because he hoped in the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was anticipating it. And he took enjoyment in helping others and giving in sadaqah or charity. And this is why I always say based on the teaching of Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam happiness or success is how many people are better off because we lived and this is this is the habit of Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam this is how he was the Imam ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah also mentioned in the same book and when a person in need submitted his case to the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would give preference to the needs of the one who was asking over and above his own needs even though he needed it. On occasion this was even from the food that himself sallallahu alayhi wa sallam needed it. And sometimes from the clothes which he himself was wearing sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And likewise my brothers and sisters were you to look at the companions of Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam Allah alayhim then there was no one more open hearted than them no one more righteous no more no one more pious and no one more uh, God fearing uh, than the Sahaba radiallahu anhu now of course all of them together we take them as role models because each one of them have a distinct uh, uh, thing to, to follow or, or a light like Rasulullah to follow 
But the Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam is one role model by himself. No one can reach to his level. He's like a, a star that no one can reach. That's 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 just given to him sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam mentioned in a hadith collected by Imam al-Tabari rahimahullah that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam said that when the light enters into the heart then it expanded and it becomes open and vast meaning that when the light of Islam and the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enters the heart then those hearts they become expansive they look toward others and how they can benefit others that's how we that's how we can test our iman our faith those hearts are hearts that are righteous and pious seeking nothing but the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's why Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam told us لا تحقرن من المعروف شيئا ولو أن تلقى أخاك بوجه طلق that's, uh, uh, this is narrated in Sahih Muslim Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam said let not any of you be little or look down upon a good deed even if it be that you smile in the face of your brother being good righteous deeds my brothers and sisters will benefit us in the day of judgment they are from the acts that will open up the gates of heaven to us which will my which will make our scale of good deeds very heavy and outweigh inshallah our sins so who will look down upon a good deed even if it's smiling in the face of a brother or a sister جاء رجل إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال يا رسول الله أي الصدقة أعظم أعظم أجرا قال أن تصدق وأنت صحيح شحيح تخشى الفقر وتأمل الغنى this is in رواه البخاري a man came to the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and said oh messenger of Allah which صدقة which charity is one of that gives the greatest amount of reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Prophet وسلم, said that you give in charity while you are in good health and you are feeling miserly you want to hold into it you don't want to let it go and you want to desire that wealth that you possess you want to hold into it and you fear poverty for yourself and that you hope for riches so when these conditions come together this is the time that you will receive the greatest reward from giving your sadaqah you love that money you don't want to let go of it and yet you go and give it in charity that you are in good health that you feel miserly that you fear poverty and you hope for riches in this situation when you give in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then the reward is that is at its greatest Rasul said وَلَا تُمْهِلُوا حَتَّى إِذَا بَلَغَتُ الْحُلْقُومِ قُلْتُوا لِفُلَانٍ كَذَا وَلِفُلَانٍ كَذَا وَقَدْ كَانَ لِفُلَانٍ Also in Bukhari So do not delay the charity until you are at the point of death and then you say give this to so and so and give that to so and so This is the, the ayah that I read in the beginning in Surah Al-Munafiqoon like at the time of death, oh please Allah give, uh, get me back so I can do more charity. At that point, your wealth and property already belongs to so and so, most likely your family. This is in Sahih al-Bukhari. So the Prophet ﷺ said, وَلَا تُمْهِلُوا حَتَّى إِذَا بَلَغَتِ الْحُقُومِ Do not wait up until the soul about to depart from the body, meaning you are in the agony of death, and then you decide that you are going to give in charity. وَأَنْتَ صَحِيحٌ شَحِيحٌ تَخْشَ الْفَقْرِ Rather the best charity is when you are feeling miserly and you fear poverty for yourself and hope for riches. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Amran chapter 3 verse 133 وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ وَالْأَرْضُ أُعَدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ and march forth in the way which leads to forgiveness from your Lord and for paradise as wide as are the heavens and the earth prepared for the muttaqin prepared for those 
المتقون prepared for those who are God conscious and who are those who are God conscious Allah defines it in the next ayah in the same chapter uh, verse 134 of Surah Al-Amran chapter 3 الذين ينفقون في السراء والضراء والقاذمين الغيظة والعافين عن الناس والله يحب المحسنين those who spend in Allah's cause in the, whether in deeds, charity, the zakat, the, if giving food, whatever good deeds, in prosperity and in adversity, who repress anger and who pardon others, verily, or pardon men or people. Allah, verily, Allah loves al muhsinin those who are good doers or, or try to perfect their good doing. Now we are in the final phase at Danbury Masjid. Uh, with the expansion which I consider the last quarter mile as you saw earlier in the video that you uh, saw the extension part of the masjid has been completed with the grace and blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with your help now this last quarter mile final phase or stage is the renovation of the original part of the masjid and we will break it down into two phases the f or two parts of phase four where we have been praying in that, that part of the masjid where we have been praying for over 30 years. So the project which we have started back in 2016 is coming to an end soon, but we need your help in that final stretch for renovating our original side of the masjid, the side that you've been praying, like I just said, for the past or over a uh, little over 30 years. The first thing, it will thirty thousand dollar in renovation that thirty thousand dollar will be for the de uh, the demolish or demolishing the two bathrooms where we used to go all the times and the wudu area the original wudu area where we used to make wudu also the removing of the ceiling and changing of the spotlights they've been very old and had to be changed and the removal of old plumbing and old electric panels and bringing them up to code. This part is thirty thousand of renovation, thirty thousand dollars. Second thing is the fifteen thousand dollars for the removal of old carpet and tiles, or and change them to a newer one. This carpet and tiles been old, been with us for a very long time, and it's rotten, and uh, we it needs to be replaced. And that will be we estimated it around fifteen thousand dollars. $20,000 in a new audio and video system to cover the entire new infrastructure the place where we used to pray and plus the extension that's about $20,000 and $15,000 for the outside fence from Main Street all the way uh, to the uh, uh, big uh, parking lot all together in total for that final stretch of phase four to finish and renovation about eighty thousand dollars but for this part one of phase four we are looking to raise fifty thousand dollars tonight inshallah and are moving forward to finish the internal part of masjid the renovation where we we use uh, to pray uh, before how do how and where do we donate we go to the masjid website inshallah one word danbury masjid.com slash home uh, and uh, you click on the upper right hand side uh, the button of donate and inshallah i will write the uh, uh, link on the comment first comment before so brothers and sisters do not worry about what you have been given what you have given it is written with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not hold back when you give especially in the month of Ramadan which is today or tomorrow the last days like our mother Umm al-Mu'mineen Aisha may Allah be pleased with her radiallahu anha and other companions of Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam used to say there is no one more generous than Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he was never more generous than he was in the month of Ramadan so when you give then do not think that you are doing a favor to others rather you are doing a favor to yourself you are saving yourself from the hellfire 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala place the seed of generosity in our hearts and nurture it so that we may become from the most generous of people. I would like to remind myself first and foremost and you with the hadith of Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam, two words very heavy in the scale of very very light on the tongue, very heavy on the scale of good deeds, beloved to the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there is subhanallah wa bihamdih subhanallah al-azim say it at least a hundred times a day and uh, f please stay uh, online uh, for a few minutes for khatm al-quran uh, dua by Hafiz Abdul Rashid aqulu qawli hada wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum ask Allah for forgiveness he is the most forgiving the most merciful rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fil akhirati hasanatan wa qina adab al-nar subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa jazakum Allah khairan wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh